I just got a package. I finally got the Sincho knitting machine and I'm really excited because I've been seeing everybody on TikTok play with it and just make really cool things and like sweaters and stuff like that. So I just wanted to play around, see if I could master this thing. Hopefully by the end of this video, I'll have like a sweater or a cute maxi skirt or something. If I can make a whole bunch of stuff with it, I don't know. The only thing is like, I've heard so many people say that it's not good like there's a lot of people that make things with it but obviously but then when i go through the comments a lot of people are like oh mine is broken mine broke after the third use and stuff like that so um i just have to see for myself hopefully hopefully it doesn't break because this was a uh, pretty expensive oh it comes with yarn that's cute Okay, so the instructions are kind of clear, but when it comes to actually putting the yarn on the machine, I think I'm gonna have to look at a more visual thing. So I'm gonna go on YouTube and figure out how to cast on and all that stuff. But so far it looks like this. Um, a lot of people were saying that their little counter wasn't working. Mine works perfectly fine. The suction cups are working good. And I'm just going to be practicing on this yarn that came with it because I think this one's kind of ugly. So yeah, let's get into it. You know what's crazy? My arm is literally hurting already and I barely haven't even done anything. Oh my gosh. Just spinning it around. I have nothing to say right now, I guess. But I wonder how I would make something that's oversized. Let me see if I can go a little bit faster. But like, there's only like 48 pegs on here. So I'm guessing that's like 48 stitches. And if you want to make something that's bigger, like I know that there's a panel option and you can make panels for everything, but what if you want to make like, like an oversized sweater and it's like only letting you go to like 48 stitches, 48 plus 48. As much as I love like fitted sweaters, I need, I need an oversized one, you know? All right, so this was the little tester that I just did um just with the yarn that came in with the central machine um everything went well it looks like everything is pretty even in tension i was like holding the yarn um pretty tight well, not tight but like firm so that it would stay here's what the first ever thing i made looks like um it just i think it looks pretty good like everything looks even and stuff and then this is the back the only thing is like when I was casting off, I was starting to drop stitches and you can see right here. I just, I didn't care. So if you like, if I pull it like this, I mean, that would be a cool idea to do for like, um, like distressed look and stuff, you know, like it has like a hole and everything. So I think I'm ready to try my attempt at making my first sweater on the knitting machine. I'm going to go through my yarn and see what I can use. All right. So I have a lot. This whole closet there's a lot going on so just ignore all of this but i a lot of the yarn in the closet i don't really touch that much so i think i want to use some of the scrap yarn that i have like in here or the balls that i just don't use to make a cute little sweater i'm thinking of using this one because this has just been sitting here and i think a green sweater would be cute and i wouldn't have to do anything i just use the ball keep it on the ball that might be an option either that or this but i don't i don't know if this is enough to make a whole sweater but 
I can attempt. This is really cute. I might do this, but I don't know if this will be enough. So I'm gonna just put it over there. Okay, so before I wanted to make the sweater, I was just testing out how to do panel knitting. And it is a lot more complicated than the tube. Um, I was dropping a lot of stitches and this is just my test yarn. It's annoying because like this uh, suction cup won't stay still. Like whenever I'm cranking, it just, it's always like moving when I'm going the opposite side. So it's just something that I have to deal with, but I'm gonna just continue to practice before I actually make the sweater just so it can come out nice. For my official practice piece, I decided to create a sweater. I didn't know if this green yarn would even be enough, but I was okay with trying. Hi. So, so far I've gotten to uh, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 30, 40. I've done 40 rows so far. This is what it looks like. Um, I'm thinking because I don't know if this is going to be enough for a sweater. I think I might make this the skirt. Um, so I'm going to just play, play around with it. Um, so basically I'm going to do this. For, I'm gonna make two of these. I'm gonna do like, I don't know, maybe 100 or 200 rows and see how long it is from there. And then um, I'm gonna just test it out. I don't know how long I should make it. I want it to be a maxi skirt, but yeah. So, but right now I'm gonna get some food cause I'm hungry and then we're gonna continue. I made myself a little vegan bologna oh shoot a vegetarian vegan a vegetarian bologna sandwich vegan meat and then regular cheese mm. it's kind of it's all right i might have to start over because i don't know how to fix this. Like I'm using the crochet hook. It's kind of blurry, but I'm using the crochet hook to like try and bring it up. But I think because I went too far and it's two of them that has dropped stitches out of like all of it. I think I might have to start over. So I'm going to try and fix it, but we'll see. Okay. So I took um, the panel that I was doing off of the knitting machine. And I know I said I wanted to make a maxi skirt, but this is how much yarn I have left. And I feel like if I use the whole, why am I talking like this? If I use the whole uh, ball of yarn for just this panel, I think I won't have enough yarn. So I'm just gonna try make it like a mini skirt just to test it out. And then if I can figure out like what combos of yarn I wanna do, cause I do have a lot of blue yarn and I think I'm gonna have no choice but to make something blue. I think. I think I'll make this sweater blue and then I'm just gonna make this green mini skirt. It's kind of stressing me out with the whole dropping stitches thing. Um, but I think the more that I do it, the more it'll be better, I guess. How are people on TikTok doing this so fast? Like I know people speed it up, but like when I'm doing it, like I have to like slowly turn it like this. Like I can't just keep After finishing the two panels, I did mattress stitch to sew them together and then tried it on. So on my first day of having my Sencho machine, I have created exactly four different pieces. Um, the first was this mini skirt. This was like the actual first piece that I made as a tester just to see if I could actually do something and it came out pretty good. Um, the next piece I made was this scarf here, which I am in love with. This came out so good. I think it's because of the yarn that I just really love the yarn. Um, unfortunately, I don't know what brand it is, but I love the colors. It's perfectly, it works perfect for my style and it's really cute. And then I decided to make another scarf with my with some extra yarn um i don't like how this came out this was annoying i don't know how this happened either but it didn't happen again for the rest of the scarf um 
I like this, but if you look far away, it looks like it's stained when it's actually just the different dye jobs throughout the scarf. Um, but it's still cute. I really like it. I'm thinking of um, sewing the ends together to make it more neat instead of it curling at the end, but it doesn't bother me that much. And the last piece I made was this skirt. I was going to make it a maxi skirt, but I, th I really thought it was long enough for a maxi skirt, but once I sewed it together on the sides, it got shorter, so I might have to do more rows for it. And yeah, I I'm really happy with what I made so far, and I think I've, ki I've got a grasp on the machine at this point. So I think what I'm going to do is continue my quest on making new things. Since today was a new day, I decided on a couple projects I wanted to create to test if I had the skills to actually create them with the machine. I decided on a beanie, a sweater, and a pair of leg warmers. Here I put together all of the yarn I have to work with at this time. Um, so hopefully I can make a beanie, oh of course I can make a beanie, but hopefully I can make a cute sweater with this, maybe a nice pair of leg warmers. I actually do want to make another scarf, I kind of am a bit obsessed with making scarves, but yeah, let's see what we can do. Since I was using my scrap yarn, I took over an hour to figure out color schemes, but eventually decided to just go for it and started working on the sweater. I first started with the front and the back panels, and I will just say that working on the panels was incredibly annoying. Maybe it's because I'm still new to the using the machine, but it's more prone to dropping stitches, especially when I change colors when I'm on panel mode instead of tube mode. You have to be super careful at the beginning and the end of each row to make sure you don't drop stitches or else you'll just want to throw the machine out the window like I almost did. Also, this took a lot longer for me because I had trouble cranking the machine a lot of the times and I would have to constantly stop and start and stop, so it took a couple hours unfortunately. After I finished the front and back panels, I worked on the sleeves. I didn't want them to be tight and I honestly used that as an excuse to not work in panel mode again, so I made the sleeves in the tube mode. Mode, which was just so much easier. I didn't drop any stitches or go through any trouble changing the colors or anything. I also noticed that the machine was letting me crank normally without having to stop every two seconds in two mode, which made me very happy. After I made the panels for the sweater, I put it to the side and decided to make a tube top instead of the leg warmers. I used a mix of black and beige yarn and sporadically changed the colors when I wanted to to make it more unique. This one was a lot easier to crank, but I was still going through it low key. After, I wanted to create a beanie, but my hand started hurting really bad, and the part of it that I was using to crank the machine felt kind of bruised and would hurt to the touch, and I, I didn't realize that I was cranking the machine so hard, so I just decided to just call it a night. The next day, I was ready to conquer the machine. I put on a band-aid, tied my hair out of my face, opened up a can of sparkling water, and got to work. I struggled again with cranking, but then I decided to just let go of the yarn and let the tension holder hold it, if that makes sense, and that helped me so much. I held down the leg of the machine so it wouldn't flop all over the place like it did yesterday, and this decision was the best ever. The first project I worked on was a scarf. I lined up all the muted blue tones I had so that the color scheme would work together and just worked until I was running out of yarn. Once I got to a good place, which was 364 rows, I added scrap yarn to the top the same way I did at the bottom for 10 rows and then cranked the machine until everything fell off. The scrap yarn is basically a placeholder so that if you want a section that's closed, you can just slip stitch through the holes where the two colors change and then pull the scrap yarn out without having the ends looking bad. After I pulled out the scrap yarn and weaved in my ends, I had a beautiful scarf. My next project was a cat beanie. I honestly didn't know what I was doing exactly, and I knew it shouldn't be too long, but I didn't know exactly how long it should be at the same time, so I just went with 100 rows. I changed the colors every 5 rows to make it have a cute green color scheme, and at 100 rows, I added my scrap yarn for 10 rows so I could make the ear section of the cat beanie. After I took it off the machine, I folded it inside out and tied every color change together, which made it easier instead of having to weave in all the ends, and then pulled it right side out to slip stitch the top together. But once I tried it on, it didn't look like the cat beanie of my dreams, like at all. So I took out the slip stitching and fixed some of the bottom and looked at a tutorial on how to make a beanie so I can 
turn this into something. Later on, I realized that you could use the same method of making a beanie to make a cat hat, so I practiced again off camera and my second attempt at the cat beanie was perfect. I gave it a third attempt with my black and gray yarn. I put scrap yarn in the beginning and the end of the hat and still did 100 rows for the main colors of the project. At the end, the thing I did differently from the first beanie was pull one end through the other and slip stitch both ends together. This makes the hat smaller, thicker, and the brim of the hat looks very clean and professional. I'm gonna make a tutorial very soon if you wanna know how to make some of the things that I did. To wrap up this interesting adventure, here is everything I was able to make the past couple of days with the knitting machine. The first piece I'm gonna show is the first scarf that I made on day one. I didn't know anything about the scrap yarn trick yet, so I just threw the yarn onto the machine and cranked until I ran out of yarn. I truly wish I knew what yarn this was because this is my absolute favorite yarn that I worked with this whole video. The scarf turned out so soft and delicate and every time I touch it, it feels like I'm a rich person heading out for a night in Amsterdam or something. This next scarf I used Karen cake yarn that was rainbow themed and did the exact same thing I did with the first scarf. The only thing I don't like is that I guess during the dye job for this yarn some of the dye slipped out here and there so if you look far away it looks like the scarf has stains on it but besides that it's super soft again and very elegant. The next scarf was a mix of different impeccable blue yarns that I had sitting around from my howl coat project. For this one I used scrap yarn at the beginning and the end of the project and slip stitched the ends closed and it gave this clean beautiful finish. It's such a beautiful scarf and it just made me want to make like 80 other scarves for everybody I know because the scarves from this machine comes out so beautifully. This last scarf, I I don't know why, but I decided to use the entire skein for each block of color on this scarf, which is why it's incredibly long. I didn't know what I wanted to do with the yarn because it was just sitting in the closet for months, so I decided to just make it into a scarf. It's incredibly long and will drag on the floor unless I fold it over my neck, but I enjoy the look of a long scarf, so it worked out perfectly. It's as delicate as the other scarves and is probably my favorite next to the first scarf. This is the first hat that I finished. It was supposed to be a cat beanie, but I was struggling with knowing what exactly I was doing, but it actually came out pretty cute when I switched it to a base basic beanie instead. It reminded me of Bella Swan's hat, kinda, not really. The next beanie is the actual cat beanie that I finished. This was a tester so I made it with plain white yarn and was actually thinking of adding cute star tassels or just some type of decor to it, but I couldn't decide nor did I have the yarn to do what I actually wanted to do so I just kept it plain for the video. I created another cat beanie to just have a striped one like I wanted and I thought this one came out super cute. Here is the blue sweater that I made on day two. I wasn't happy about the sweater until I actually tried it on. I was pretty relieved that I didn't give up on it halfway through since it was giving me a lot of trouble. I will say though, I would prefer to use yarn that has different colors mixed in just so I can avoid changing colors in the panel mode. One of my favorite pieces in this video is definitely the tube top. After creating it, I made a chain in the front of the top and then chained until it wrapped over my neck, then tied it to the stitch next to the beginning of the chain. I think the colors I used for this top is amazing and I think I want to buy more of these colors so that I can make a sweater out of these colors as well. The top is pretty versatile, like if you don't want the necktie thing, you can easily tie it into the top and then turn the top to the side to just have a regular tube top or you can tie it in the front as a bow and you can add some like cute ruffles to the top or something like that. I will say though the first time you put on the tube top you will struggle but the cool thing about the central knitting pieces is that they're very stretchy so they'll form to your body. But if you are a bigger size than medium, I would say if you want to make a tube top you'll probably have to make panels and then sew the sides together. Here is the first skirt I made on day one with the green yarn I had rotting away in my closet. It's okay. I'm most likely gonna just take it apart and use it for something else, but it did help teach me how to make a skirt, so after this one, I took some extra brown yarn and made this skirt. It was supposed to go down to my ankles, and I swear I thought it did, but when I sewed the sides together, it was nowhere near my ankles. But I still think it's cute. I think for skirts with the machine, I'll probably knit 
a ribbing on the top so that it would be more fitting on my waist and I could make it a bit tighter by skipping stitches when I attach the yarn. I'll have to test this out, but if it works, I'm definitely gonna make a bunch of skirts and maybe even dresses. Overall, I need to practice more on the panel option, but I actually enjoy the machine. It stressed me out a lot when I was working with it in the beginning, but once I got the hang of it, I got pretty addicted to it and fell in love. So I would recommend it. I'm definitely gonna make some cool tutorials on how to use the machine and how to create some fun pieces very soon. So stay tuned and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.